Phew. All right, I can't believe you're still there with me after that left hand. Um, there's a lot of notes, but fortunately, like I said, the right hand can end up start taking some of them, and that's always a really good thing, uh, because actually the melody does creep into the left hand every now and then. You couldn't really hear it when we were playing it, but once we put the hands together, you'll really see it. Um, I'm not going to be picking out any notes anymore, so by this point you should have both the right hand and left hand separately very good. Um, maybe experiment around a little bit trying to put them together on your own. For now, I'm going to put them together, do it kind of slowly, and call out points of interest, if nothing else, really, that I think you should notice. Alright, and then after this, actually, um, once we've gone through it, I'll get on to advanced techniques. How I played, we're playing the song at, excuse me, playing the song as written right now. Um, I played it a little bit differently, uh, made it a bit more advanced. Looks like you can still kind of see most of the notes. Um, I left them on from the left hand. I've uh, done these straight through in a row, so if you've been watching these videos straight through in a row, pity me. It's been about 40 minutes straight of talking. That water's almost gone. No, don't really pity me. All right, let's see how this goes. Now you'll see why we played it twice. I've ever played it, but I think you get the idea. Uh, like I said, now you can see why we played that whistle twice. Once to set the tone for the song. And the second time to introduce the left hand. to measure eight if you're watching along in the sheet music. Next part. start taking over a lot more for the left hand and where the melody starts actually moving into the left hand every now and then. So I'll play it through and start annotating if you will. Sorry to interrupt, but that's kind of the Mockingjay call. For those of you who haven't read the book, uh, the Mockingjays start answering 
another, and that forms the harmony. And in a sense, this is kind of an answer. So we need to make it sound like an answer. This is an answer to the measures before. Here's the measures before. watch the camera while I'm doing this, so I sincerely hope that you guys are getting a good show. Alright, next part, we're on measure 16. not too much special with the with this part it's just important to get the feeling right uh put the accents where i put them or put them or experiment i mean i'd actually recommend that you just experiment and find out where you like them uh it's kind of your song to replay now so we'll go through it again i'll make sure if there's anything that catches my eye i'll mention it to you ah that is one big part this is written as before between this and this. Uh, the timing in the left hand stays the same. It's kind of just this is a longer note and this is a shorter note as opposed to short note, long note. So it's written as singing or playing a trombone, a flute, something like that. You have to rest, take a breath. So exact same as what we did beforehand. Uh, same idea of making sure that you take the melody of the left hand, put it in the right so you remind yourself that it is in the melody even though it's in the left hand. Um, feel free to take over some of the left hand's notes with the right hand. I'm just doing it again to throw in where I mean all of that.
going to be pretty similar again, except instead of staying all up in the upper octaves, you're going to jump a little bit back and forth. after this it gets kind of meaningful and slow and hard to do. Um, but that should be fairly familiar. Um, I'll annotate it a little bit because there are some things that you should still remember. Like this. I changed the timing from what's written. heavy, strong, powerful, all the way up through measure 37, where it'll be like... Sometimes when you're playing piano, moving from soft to loud can be really powerful, but also moving from loud to soft can be just as powerful, and it's something to keep in mind. Powerful, clean, soft, they're all kind of some, they're all in there. All right, the very last part. This says uh, R-A-L-L, Rallentando, uh, which I kind of take just to mean slow down a little bit. Apologies, let me do that again. two minutes let's spend it all on that and I'll make a separate video for advanced techniques so first of all this is the end of the song it's important to make it very slow very powerful uh, it says rallentando it does not say rubato which technically mean, rubato would mean that you can invent your own tempo but I do it anyway a little bit of a pause rest maybe a breath but without actually lift, lifting the pedal or the note right hand can take over. Uh, it's really important though when you're doing that that you have an equal amount of pressure between left hand and right hand so that it doesn't sound different. It should be a smooth continuous roll especially when it's delicate like this. Very hard to keep it delicate. Now you can do two things with this roll. You can roll left and right at the same time or you can go left and right so it's like one long roll. I do the latter. Up to you though. I'm very soft down here. And there you have it. You've put together a ruse whistle. Got a little bit of time for an, at the end. Uh, I hope you liked this entire series of tutorials. I hope they weren't too long. I couldn't really think of any way to shorten it up. So, hope you guys like it. Uh, I'll have one more video and that one will actually be advanced techniques, where I show you how I changed it to the way I played it. Alright, stay tuned if you want that. Bye.